Therefore, what is the conclusion of all this? Now that you understand, right? The conclusion is that there is a decree, a terrible decree, a gzera against America. Just like there was a decree against the world model, just like there's a decree, right, against the Daim, and just like I mentioned, there's a decree with Katrina in, in uh, New Orleans, right? You don't realize that, and you know where you see that? That there's a decree? The decree is that America must wither, right? How long do you think? It's only by God's grace that America is the most powerful nation, probably that ever was. The wealthiest nation, right? They are tremendously wealthy. They are blessed with resources. They are blessed with business know-how. You think this is an accident? Who do you think you are? You think all of this comes from your brilliance? It's all God. We know that, you see. So why are we tampering with this? Therefore, there's a decree with God. That's the decree. And I'll show you how we see this. That America must wither ultimately and become a third world. Right. Just like he's done to all the civilizations. Why do you think the civilizations are destroyed? Because ultimately speaking, they are involved in such evil that God says, I cannot allow. It's not only the retribution for sins. Many of the nations have engaged in sins that destroy civilizations. Right. And guess what? None of them are around. None of them. The only one around is Jews. Do you ever wonder why? Exactly. Because they're the only one who observes the Torah and will bring righteousness and holiness and divinity to the world. Right. Uh, where do we see this? Really? There's a divine decree? Yes. You know where you see this? Because Trump was almost killed. Trump is the basically... And remember, I'm not saying this because I'm for Trump, although I agree with his policies, no question. And he's the guy for the job. As I said many times, he's the Tev Sheb Esav. He's the good part of Esav that is doing tshuva right. And he will, in many ways, confront the nations to begin the process of redemption. I've said this many, many times, oh, you see. But wait a minute. Do you think that crazy guy, shooter, could shoot a bullet at a former president, not only that, at the only one who could save America, right, from that decree, you think he could shoot that bullet without permission of God? Of course not. Uh, the fact that he was able to shoot and the unbelievable incompetence of the Secret Service, which people cannot believe. I mean, you look at the Three Stooges. Remember the Three Stooges? Lowell and Hardy, Abbott and Costello. Uh, that's basically what the Secret Service was all about. And this is what America pays billions of dollars to protect? Uh, how do you think it happened? Now, I'm not going to the conspiracy theories, whatever. But minimally, it was unbelievable incompetence and ineptitude. That's staggering. Uh, they should get the Guinness World Prize for incompetence of a government agency. And the answer is because that's the zero. Because if Trump dies, it's not a Trump that dies only. It's America that dies, because he's the only one that can restore. And I'll tell you something, Trump got it right. Uh, he, he prophesied, and he didn't even realize. Here's what Trump said. I should not, at the, at the speech of the convention, <clears throat> Republican convention, I should not be here today. He's right. He shouldn't be here. Why? Because of the zero that God allowed the shooter to almost take him out. Right. It's a divine decree. So what did God do? He saved him. But this, not was, a, this was not an ordinary rescue. This was a salvation of unbelievable, miraculous proportions. And I mentioned last time a why. Because he wants to show people that there's a message behind this. But there's also that presents the good news. But where do you see that there's Xera? Let me tell you something. You think Obama, Biden, and Harris running can do anything without the decree of God? Of course not. This whole thing is such a short-sightedness. <clears throat> Obama began the decree, right? He was a terrible president. 
But what's interesting about Obama is God said no, and I once said the numerical value of uh, Barack Obama, right, is Mashiach, right? I think it's 358. That's his numerical, which means very interesting, and it's also the numerical value of Nochosh, of snake. Zelumazeh, one is opposed to the other. You see? <clears throat> so, in many ways, God gave him this said, listen, before you engage in your evil of Esau, I'm going to give you a chance to do good, to be part of the messianic process to help America stay righteous, right? Uh, what does he do? goes to Egypt right after he becomes president and he gives this ridiculous speech. Well, it's the Arabs and they're the main thing, all right, which is terrible for the state of Israel, which is the ally. <clears throat> and I want to tell you something which most people are not aware of. Not only Biden, so what God continued is the destruction of Obama, which was very bad, to Biden. Biden is part of the Xera, right, to destroy America. You think Biden can become president with, without the decree? Of course not. Biden's reason for being president is to wither, to destroy America. This is the decree against America. Don't you understand? This is what's happening. You see, and he did. He did a fabulous job between the border, the crime, uh, the inflation. Everybody's suffering. For what? Because of his idiotic laws? He, he destroys the energy of America. And I mean, everything he does turns to mud. You see, uh, Biden is a continuation, not of Obama, of the Xero. And people don't understand that. Who's coming next? Harris. Okay, how do we get a handle on Harris? Uh, let me tell you something that people do not realize about Harris. First of all, her name is Kamala. I don't know if you know it, uh, but Kamala has the exact same letters in Hebrew as Amalek. Right. She's the third aspect, and she will finish off America. Right. Uh, and it's not only that, because uh, uh, Kamala, if you write it out in Hebrew, okay, spells Amalek. And Amalek is the end. You know, it's always, I, I find it very interesting, and I'll, I'll talk about what, what, what seems to be happening, but I, I, I don't believe it will happen in any case, and so on, you know. There were three bad people when Esau became evil, the Rasha of Esau. There are three bad people. Each one was a continuity of the previous. First it was Esau, came a Russia, came a tremendously evil person, and we know that. I've talked enough about Esau. But guess what? Esau had a son, Eliphaz. He's a continuity, and he wanted to kill Yaakov. When Yaakov was running away from his father, Esau, right, because of the blessings and so on, Eliphaz caught up with him. He wanted to kill him to fulfill the wish of his father. Uh, so Yaakov, the message says this. He said, listen, you want to fulfill the wish of your father by killing me. So here's what, let's make a deal. It says that a poor man is what? Is equivalent to a dead man. That's what it is. So therefore, I will give you all my money, everything I have, and that will make me incredibly poor, and that will legally be that I'm dead, and therefore you will have fulfilled the wishes of your father. Could you imagine this? Uh, that Alifa wanted to kill Yaakov, uh, and if not for Yaakov's argument, I don't know if he could have killed him, because Yaakov was very strong, and so on, but he certainly wanted to, right? So Eliphaz is a continuity of Esau. In fact, that's exactly what he did. Who came after Eliphaz? Who is the child of Eliphaz? Amalek. He's worse than Eliphaz, which is worse. <laughs> I don't know if he's worse, but he's like Esau. <laughs> Three people, right? Esau, Eliphaz, and Amalek. And Amalek is the worst. What do we have now? The Xero, Obama, to try to destroy America. Then we have what? Biden. And Biden did, did it. I mean, America is a whole different country than it was then. I'll just take a look at the destruction. And one of the worst things is the debt. America, America now owes, or the debt, is $35 trillion. 
Now, neither you nor I have any idea what a trillion. In fact, I'd like to tell you what it is. Okay? Just care, to have some kind of understanding. <clears throat> if I have a $1 million in $100 bills, how high would the stack be? I will tell you. The stack would be 40 inches. That means if you take $100 bills and stack it 40 inches, that's a $1 million. Okay. How high is the stack of $100 bills if it's not $1 billion, but $1 trillion? And the answer is, if I remember correctly, 674 miles. 40 inches, 674 miles. And America owes $35 trillion. That is unsustainable, which means that eventually America will lose its status as a reserve currency. And that is the end of America. It'll be like Germany after the war, where you needed, I think, 80,000 marks to buy a Mickey Mouse watch, or whatever, and so on. <clears throat> How can you sustain that? And, and, and Harris, what I understand, she wants to take more money, trillions of dollars, for her ridiculous policies. You see, <clears throat> this is what's happening, and so on. We are looking at a zero against America, or else Trump could never have been shot at all. And not only that, we would never have had somebody like Obama or Biden, and now we are threatened with Kamala Harris. Now, what the Rebunsham did to Harris is very interesting. All of a sudden, Netanyahu comes to give a speech to the Congress. Now, I don't know if you know it, but Harris is the president of the Senate. That is her constitutional role. As such, if he's going to address the Senate, and he's a major ally of America, don't you think she should be there? No. Where is she? So she goes to some sorority that took precedence, precedence over her being in the Senate, which is a constitutional role, especially for Israel, which is a major ally, right? Why did God do that? Because God said, listen, before as part of the Xerah, I want to give you a chance not to be the evil that you are. Because Harris, really, if you want to look at it psychologically, she is a narcissistic megalomaniac. That's really what she is psychologically. She loves herself. She's into power and glory. I mean, if, even if you look at her biography, you could see 92% of her staff of three and a half years is gone because they can't even work with her. I don't want to go through all the statistics and so on uh, and how cruel she was and so on. <clears throat> you see, this is basically what she is. You see, so God said, I'm going to give you a chance to redeem yourself. In what way? Like I gave Obama. I'm going to send Netanyahu at that time that you are the candidate to do what? Uh, to uh, attend and give honor to the Jewish people you see? And that will give you a tremendous merit. Why? Because if you honor the Jewish people, then you have honored me. Because everybody identifies the Jews with the Bible and so on. So what does she do? Because she really hates the Jews. Even if she's married to a Jew, who's not much of a Jew anyway. But in any case, so what does she do? She smacks Netanyahu in the face by going against her own constitutional responsibilities. And she goes to some sorority. This is what took precedence. So this was a bureau. God tested her, and he gave her the ability to, in some way to earn merit. <coughs> and she blew it. She's an absolute fool. She has no idea what she just gave up, which is very good for America, because now that she blew it, She's going to lose, which I will talk about. But in any case, so this is what's happening, you see. Uh, uh, and take a look, but the incredible thing about uh, what's happening with the third party, Kamala Harris, is this. People do not realize this. What Obama pulled, uh, not, uh, excuse me, Kamala pulled off is a miracle. You don't realize that. Kamala is the only president in this candidate, right, that is a candidate without one vote of the 14 million people in the primaries being cast for her. But that's incredible. That's impossible. 
you know, nobody ever cast a vote. Not only that, she was rejected when she was running against Biden. She couldn't even make it to Iowa. Uh, you see, because everybody knows uh, that she's got lunatic policies. And she is a lunatic. You see, <clears throat> but how? How in the world do you become a candidate of a major political party, the Democratic Party, without any vote? This is anti-democratic. What do you call that? I will tell you. It's a Nes Nigla. You don't understand. She became the candidate uh, for president of the Democratic Party, completely anti-democratic. How? Who can pull that off? Only God, right? Why? Because she's part of the zero to destroy America. Right. And the proof of that? We've all heard her talk. That's assuming she doesn't giggle all the time. Right? We've all heard her talk. Did you ever hear her talk? She doesn't make any sense. And none of that, she's unbelievably superficial. And more important, she was a senator, she was a DA of San Francisco, and then the Attorney General of California, and she was known as a very cruel person sending blacks to prison because of marijuana, which I think she herself smokes, you see? <clears throat> and she laughs through it. And not only that, she was a senator for six years. I'm not even going to go into why she was a senator, what her services that she rendered to people and so on. And she was a senator. She did nothing for six years. She doesn't have one achievement in six years. And in the three and a half years, the only thing she was commissioned to do, which she denies, and she's trying to whitewash history with the media and so on, right, was that she was the immigration or migrant uh, 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 czar, right? The, the uh, migrant czar and so on. Well, she didn't do anything. She went down to the border once and that was it. Uh, you see, even that she couldn't accomplish. She has done nothing in three and a half years, basically. So in almost one decade of being in political office, <clears throat> a senator and a VP, and she wants to become president of the United States, the most difficult job and the most powerful person in the world, of the free world also? Is America serious? So what do you think about? You have an idea how crazy this is? Since when does skin color and gender have anything to do with competence? Nothing. Uh, you know, if she was a tremendously accomplished person, I can hear it. But what does that have to do with skin color? or, or uh, you know, or uh, gender, nothing. Uh, so you want to make this woman, and not only that, she's incredibly left, liberal, radical left. She's recognized as the most liberal candidate for presidency in the history of this country. You have an idea what she wants to do? I don't want to go through the litany. She wants to take Medicaid and give it to the immigrants. I don't want to even go through that. She will destroy America. She's part of the Xera, right. And people do not understand. She's part of Xera. She's a third party to the Xera, third stage. That's why a miracle can happen that can put her into office, which is unheard of. And that's why every half America or whatever can ignore the fact that she has done nothing. I, I tell you, it's hard to imagine this, what is happening, you see. In any case, however, so what will happen? Well, we have to hope that the Xer is going to end, right? And I want to tell you something. I believe it will. Why? And the answer to that is because really Trump, as part of the Xer, that America has to diminish, was saved by an open miracle. Not by where the Secret Service found the shooter, which they knew about an hour before or whatever. That's not why. He was saved by an open miracle. And that tells me that the Rebunshim is going to have Rachmanis on America. Because America has done many great things, which is really amazing when you think about that. They have sponsored Torah. First of all, the Chesed. America is a very kind country. You know, they're tremendously in humanitarian causes. They're the greatest contributors to foreign aid. This is America. But more important, they have allowed the Jewish people to learn the Torah, to practice their religion unfettered, unchained. Right. And that is an unbelievable schos. 
And I'll tell you something. If you want to know how close that is dear to God, I will tell you historically. Okay, Japan. Did you ever wonder how Japan, after the war, was rebuilt by America? Right? Of course we could, they, they rebuilt it, whatever. But why? Okay, so they have their reckonings and so on, accountants. That's not why. <clears throat> because um, uh, Japan was destroyed. I mean, after Nagasaki and Hiroshima, forget about it. And they lost the war and they, would, they were, in, in many ways, Tokyo was bombed and so on, right? <clears throat> uh, but, uh, but Japan did something for which they had a claim on God. What was that? Uh, because Japan was an ally of Hitler, Nazi Germany, right? They were wondering, why is Germany killing all the Jews? What is wrong? So they didn't know, since they're an ally of Germany, Hitler, do they have to do the same, kill the Jews? Because they were very cruel people at that time, right? Uh, the name of the, the city of uh, China, which they, uh, whatever. Uh, so they were wondering. So they called the Amshin of a Rebbe, I don't know if you know the story. They called the Amshin of a Rebbe, who was in Japan, because all the Jews had fled. The whole Miri Yeshiva, right? They all fled. And that's what resurrected Torah in America, in Eretz Israel. How many Gedolim, I think Rabbi Aaron Kotler, so many Gedolim, the Miri Yeshiva and so on, fled to Japan. <clears throat> and also Shanghai in China <clears throat> and they were able to continue the Torah and then they left eventually for American Israel uh, so because of Japan Torah flourished Torah existed imagine if Hitler had killed all the Rosh Hashivas and all the Yeshivas in Europe God forbid that would be the end of Torah and Judaism uh, but Japan saved because Japan was the head of China in those days right uh, they, they, they were they, they were the head uh, so Japan has a claim uh, you see so they called the Amshin of a Rebbe and they said we notice that Hitler is killing all the Jews why and the Amshin of a realized wait a minute on his answer lies the fate of the Jews in Japan and China because they were all fleeing that way you know taking the Siberian Expressway all the way to the end and, and living in China and um, and Japan <clears throat> so the Amshin of a said incredible it must have been divine inspiration he said well the reason why Hitler hates the Jews right is because we are Orientals wait a minute the Japanese are also Orientals <laughs> you see so the Japanese says, so why should we kill the Jews? Because they're Orientals? We're also Orientals. So we're not going to do what Hitler did. Uh, so that answer saved the Jewish people. Meanwhile, what they did is they aided and abetted the Jews to learn the Torah. They allowed Judaism to survive. So guess what? At the end of the war, the angel of Japan appears before the great tribunal and says listen Japan even though they deserve to be destroyed why because they killed who knows how many people right that crazy emperor right Hirohito and so on how would he get a right to do this and so on uh, right and bombed America and Pearl Harbor right but wait a minute they saved Judaism they saved the Torah without Japan there would be hardly any Torah today so the Bereshim said, you're right. And therefore, I will bestow upon you a divine gift. I will make you, Japan, without any natural resources. And they don't, Japan has none. I will make you the second greatest economy on earth. So all of a sudden, Japan grew to be the second greatest economy on earth. Because of the Shus Torah, the merit of allowing Torah to survive. Well, if Japan has that claim, and look what they did, that's why America. Because America is a land of democracy and they have allowed Torah to survive and flourish, right? Everybody who wants can learn Torah and so on. And not only that, America gives Jews money to survive, how many programs they have and so on. Uh, so they actually contribute to the growth of Torah and so on, right? How much more does America have to survive? Uh, so therefore, I believe the decree is averted that Kamala will lose, you see. <clears throat> and 
what demonstrates that is that Trump is now saved by an absolute miracle, you see, and he will win the election, right, and take over America and begin the process of redemption. <clears throat> because of that, which is incredible, you see, and not only that, we realized that God wants to save, the, 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 he wants to bring the redemption. We're very close, you see, and there's a, a, a very well-known verse or posse in Nach, <clears throat> where it says, Berega kotna zavtich, Berega kotna zavtich, in one second I will abandon you, which is the Golas. Uberachmev gedoylem, and in incredible mercy, akapzeich, I will gather you. What does that mean? Uh, it means the Jews will be saved because of the tremendous mercy of God. That's why. <clears throat> so when you add the merits of America, which they have done, and the Rahmanas, the tremendous compassion that God has for the Jews, and he has tremendous compassion also for America in terms of what they've done, I clearly believe that Trump will win. Although, look how strong the Xer is. Because America is about to, half America seems to be believed, this idiotic idea that Kamala is Right? She's next to the greatest thing in sliced bread. It's unbelievable how you could fall for this nonsense, which she's done nothing for 10 years. She's absolutely incompetent. And anybody who's ever listened, and now she's, and uh, you should know, in the media who are promoting her, they know this, <clears throat> you see, but they don't care. They actually are willing accomplices to the destruction of America. That is an unbelievable, untold lie. And Kamala is now trying to defend herself, right, by saying these lies. Yeah, she's ready for fracking and all that. It's all lies and so on. That's how strong the decree is. Because that's how much America is involved <clears throat> in the destruction of civilization. So what we're seeing something now is absolutely incredible. You, you see, <clears throat> and so on. <clears throat> And I believe that's basically where we're at. And that explains what's happening. Obama, Biden, Harris, which miraculously is now the candidate. It makes no sense. And people don't even think about that. <clears throat> How did she become a candidate? It's impossible. Nobody in history ever became a candidate without a vote. Because that's the zero. And we know only God's vote counts. Nobody else's counts. Uh, you see, and if he, if he wants to make you president, guess what? You're president without any votes <laughs> being cast. I mean, this is absolutely beyond belief, you see. And only God could save Trump, uh, you see. <clears throat> and that's what uh, is going to happen. And we have to hope, uh, you know, that the zero of what America is doing to itself uh, will end, you see. And they don't realize that they are in the crosshairs of God, judgment. <coughs> you see. So I believe that in the end, everything will be great and that Trump will win and that will begin an incredible process because Trump will change America for the good, you see, for the good, for the righteousness and so on. And he will go against the enemies of the world. He will begin the turnaround, which is really, that is the job of the good part of Esau. That's what his job is, to assist the Jewish people. Remember, Rav Yavoy Tzoya, the older will serve the younger. That's the last prophetic statement, you see? And how does he do that? By countering evil, right? And right now we are faced with an unbelievable possibility of the, this, the incredible diminishment of America. And he will assist the Mashiach ben Yosef and begin that messianic process. Thank you.